My name is Jeanette Sazo. I'm 49 years old. Today's date is May the 2nd, 2008. We're in Sacramento, California, and my relationship to Jim, my partner Jimmy, is um, he's my housemate. We live in a community together. Introduce yourself. My name is Jim Wallace. Um, I'm 46 years old. Uh, I'm currently a geology student, um, and what, am I supposed to ask the question? First, go through the list and oh, then ask okay. the question. Oh, okay. My name is James Wallace. I'm 46 years old. Today is May 2nd, 2008. Uh, we're at Sacramento, California. I'll be interviewing Jeanette Sozo. Um, she's my friend. We live in the same community. Now go for the questions. Jeanette, how many children do you have? I have four children. Four children, and what are their ages? Ooh, that's a hard one, though. Okay, my oldest is 32. My second to the oldest is, she's 28. I got one that's 27 and one 25. Yeah. And how many grandchildren do you have? Fifteen. Fifteen? Grandkids. Yeah. You look really happy when you answered that question. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, what is your favorite hobby? My favorite hobby, let me think about that. Oh, I love going swimming, um, taking walks, riding bikes. And what's your favorite food? My favorite food is chicken tacos. Chicken tacos. Um, what's your favorite book you've ever read? I don't read that much. Okay. Favorite movie? My favorite movie. Any movie that has Charles Bronson. He's my favorite actor. Okay. Um, and where did you go to school at? I went to school at Dos Rios Elementary School here in Sacramento. Okay. And, then, okay. and, uh, <clears throat> and do you like uh, where you're currently at in life? Yeah, I do. Currently, right now, I'm managing a clean and sober environment community, and I enjoy working with people that um, it's bettering their lives in. Okay, um, what's your favorite memory of your twin granddaughters? My twin granddaughters, when well, the first day when they came to me, huh. when I got them, my son brought them to me, said, ask me, mom, can you watch my girls for me? More or less, can I raise them for him? And I said, yes, and that was the happiest day. If you could travel anywhere in the world, where would you go? Where would I go? Hmm. I think I'd go to Mexico. I went two years ago on vacation. It was nice. The water wasn't too good, but it was nice. The ocean is just clear. The water's clear, warm. The sand is white. Beautiful. What was the, be the best meal you had while you were down there? The best meal I had? God, it's hard to say. <laughs> That's hard to say. Yeah. We camped out on the on the beach there. Yeah. So it was hard to say. It's hard to did you I do any make, fishing? No, I don't fish. Oh, okay. Scared of fish, um, scared of um, anything that moves in the ocean, and everything moves in it. Okay. Um, what was your mother's name? My mom's name? Yeah. Frances Ramirez. Frances Ramirez. And what's your best memory of her? My best memory of my mother. Hmm. Christmas is the best memory because um, her birthday's on Christmas. And just seeing her around all of us, because I have seven brothers and one sister, and when we're all together, it's just her face just lights up with joy with yeah. all her kids together. Yeah. What's your best memory of your father? My father, that was a hard one because there's not really no memories of him. Okay. He passed That's away. Fine. He was an alcoholic. And That's fine. Do you have any memories of your grandparents? No, my grandmother passed away when I was about three. My grandfather, I was about like maybe nine or something. 
Okay, really. let's go back to grade school. What was your favorite activity in grade school? PE. <laughs> PE? Okay. We played volleyball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, How'd you two meet? We met, and um, right now we're in a clean and sober environment, and I um, manage it. And he's one of the residents that live in my house. And can you explain a little bit more about what a, what the clean and sober community is? It's um, people that have um, problems with um, alcohol and drugs, and um, we get them back on the right track. Um, we do 12-step meetings, um, get them going, get them a sponsor, help them um, see it spiritually the way it's, um, it's supposed to be, really. And do you want to talk, each of you, about how you ended up there? Or? Okay, how did you end up there, Jim? Um, actually, it started about 12 years ago. Um, I got in trouble for uh, selling marijuana and other substances. I went to prison, uh, did my one and only prison term I've done at High Desert State Prison. And I got out and I heard about Manny Diaz and I had talked to him previous to that and he got me in there and um, I wasn't ready yet um, my wife contacted me and I ended up moving up to Lake Tahoe and I had a few good years up there so then I drank again and I'm back there again now I have a sponsor I'm doing my steps um, I uh, look forward to doing those, finishing those steps so I can go back to college. I'm a geology student, but I have to do this first. Who's Manny Diaz? He's a director of the Clean and Sober um, Loaves and Fishes downtown in Sacramento. He runs, um, he opened up Clean and Sober. It's, um, he opened up, um, there's about three or four um, recovery homes there in Sacramento that um, he manages. He's uh, an amazing man. He's also a very good friend. No. Oh, my lot. And how, how many times have you been into recovery? How, how many times have you gone back to re recovery? This is my fourth time. And why do you, um, why has it been four times that you've been there? Um, I hadn't hit my bottom yet. I feel like I hadn't hit my bottom. And I think about 40 days ago, I hit my bottom. And the reason I know I hit my bottom is because my sister woke me up about three in the morning and she asked me if I was lucid and I said, yes, I think so. And she said her neighbor called her at work and said that there's a naked lady out of my front yard face down with nothing on but her cowboy boots. And she said, that's my brother Jimbo. And the neighbor lady said, I didn't see a penis. I was face down, it was cold, okay? But the reason I know that was my bottom is that's unacceptable. They've never seen me like that. And uh, it's got to be the bottom because the only thing lower than face down on the neighbor's lawn is six feet under. And, um, and uh, I'm not proud of that story. Uh, didn't shatter my fragile male ego. And the reason I tell that story to people is so I don't forget. Um, what does it remind you? What don't you want to forget? That I was face down in the neighbor's yard and she thought it was a naked lady, uh, passed out drunk. And um, my niece and nephews have never seen me like that. They, they, uh, I'm one of their heroes. And um, the next day, I thought the only way I, thing I could do is set an example for them and I came straight into town and went into the detox and uh, Manny got me in the program right away. So and in other words that you're saying that this is your your bottom <clears throat> so you're never gonna relapse? That was my bottom and I hope I never relapse. I'm gonna try to I'm gonna do my steps and I'm being honest with my sponsor and people around me now. And, and um, I'm not isolated. <clears throat> And I hope it was. You know. Okay, and what made you relapse the first three times that you relapsed? I'm an alcoholic and a drug addict. 
there was no reasons or you just went out um you know my, my my addiction started when i got shot in the chest when i was 24 years old um i um i don't want to go into it a whole lot but i walked into a situation that i had nothing to do with and a man shot me through, through my and i bled out and it was 12 hour surgery and 14 pints of blood and i had severe brain damage and i was very frustrated about why i couldn't have my old brain back and I started using drugs to cover up that pain and stuff. And um, actually, I started using them for pain relief at first. And uh, I just didn't care enough to stop. Till okay, so pain relief, pain my medication took you back to your addiction. Is that true? Um, you know, up until that point, I just, I just, I smoked some weed and I drank and I worked and I drilled oil and um, I was very functional. I don't really believe I was addicted to an act up until that point. Um, you know, I just partied. It seemed like the thing to do in the 70s, you know. Um, it uh, didn't cause me any problems. You know, I, mean, I remember it didn't land me in jail. Didn't land me in the hospital. Didn't drive me crazy. I was having a good time. Okay. Yeah. And so I stopped caring about myself, I think, <clears throat> you know, until I reached a point where I accepted the, the brain damage thing, and I actually came to realize that I'm okay with it now, and uh, it's just who I am, you know. And I'm a little crazy, you know, but, I mean, I'm not psychotic or anything, you know, and uh, there's a few people out there that really love me and care about me for who I am and unconditionally, you know, and I also uh, took a geology uh, for the fall semester last year, and um, I got A's on the midterms and A's on the final. Uh, my grade average was a B plus, and geology is not an easy course. And I want to be a geologist because I enjoyed drilling oil for 15 years. And, uh, I want to go back as a geologist because I used to hire geology students every summer, fresh out of college, that needed field experience. To, you know. So, uh, drinking and drugs just aren't fun anymore. Um, I, my records, I create records so fast, it's just instant now, you know. And I've just reached a point where I can't do it. And the only hope I have is through the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous, uh, which I've never done thoroughly and in, in order. Um, I know they work because I have friends and people I've seen grow in the program that now uh, you can't even believe the changes in them and in their life, you know. So that's what I'm looking forward to. I'm pretty into it. You know, I try to I try to be in service. I don't have enough time right now to to have a service position, but I serve. I serve where I can. You know, um, looking forward to the camp out. Uh, I've been given the privilege of being able to um, uh, marry a couple that love each other, um, and um, I think that's going to be a very spiritual experience. I think God. And how does that, that work out? Did you get to marry people? Are you? I am a minister. Nice. I was uh, ordained uh, about 12 years ago. Preaching is not my calling. Um, and I've done one wedding up at Humboldt Recovery Center in Eureka, and it was a blast. And they're still married. And um, I feel really good about it. Who who good. asked you to marry them this time? Uh, Frank and his fiance Debbie, uh, people that are in our program, um, they don't both live at the same program. They live, one's at New Start Two, one where we are, and the other one is over at New Start Two. And that camp out is one of the most spiritual experiences I've ever had in my life, if not the most spiritual experience. And I just think it's going to be a good thing, you know. Uh, I was in service last year when I went pretty much all the time I was there. And uh, I consider this a form of service, you know. And um, 
So that's that. Um, I feel pretty good about my recovery right now. Um, I think that if I get all this crap out of my trunk, I uh, will be able to live life, you know. I've had a good life, I don't regret any of it. But um, I think I'll, I think the anxiety disorder and uh, even my memory will start coming back again. You know, mm. and if it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm so used to it now, it doesn't. Okay, but I um, don't, you know. <clears throat> like, um, Manny's the director of our, our um, of our community and he uh, doesn't like people. He do, he highly against people and relationships. Um, have you ever gone out to a relationship with the program? Has any female ever taken you out? Um, no. Oh. No. Uh, I agree with the uh, that it's not good to have a relationship. They say the first year, but that's not written in stone anywhere in any of the books. It's a suggestion. And um, I tell you what, it, uh, it contributed to taking me out. It's contributed to taking me out. But I don't get into relationships in the program. Uh, I try not to. Um, Have you gotten in a relationship without somebody being in the program, you know, <clears throat> just on the outside and? Yeah, but it's not what took me out. Okay. They were they were they were using you know and stuff and, and it was sad and it and it still hurts me. I still love the girl, but that's not what took me out. You know, I'm not. I'm still in love with her. I'm not trying to contact her or anything like that. You know, I have I have friends. <clears throat> I'm fortunate enough to know some to know ladies that I can go and take care of that stuff and come back to the program. <laughs> okay. You know, <laughs> when I'm ready. <laughs> I don't want to talk about Harvey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, leave Harvey out of it, okay? Okay. <laughs> well, Harvey's into it, but he's up there and I'm down here. All right. Harvey's my rabbit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I thought I was asking the questions here. <laughs> what happened? Okay. Um, anyway, um, the man asked me to do the marriage. I don't know whether they want to have it out in the woods with just their witnesses and their bridesmaids and their groom uh, and uh, All that. best man, or if they want to do it. I'm sure there have been some up there before. I don't think this is a pre uh, would be the first one uh, if they want to do it for everybody. But if they ask me to do it, you know, if they're, I'm going to counsel them. I'm going to watch them between now and then, and I have a moral obligation to counsel them before I marry them. What are the, some of the things that you watch for in, in others' relationships before you marry them? Uh, I would watch f for how they communicate. Um, um, I don't, f far be it for me to give advice on marriage. My, my wife operates a bordello in Nevada, okay, and won't divorce me. But, you know, I do watch, I just make sure they're happy with each other, you know. If I feel like they're happy with each other and they've, they've been engaged for a while and man and wife boyfriend and girlfriend then um you know they're struggling with finding a minister they can afford to marry them and i'm just down for the cause you know okay, how long would you recommend that they be engaged for if you know you get a couple that are engaged oh, how long do you think i uh, would be a great amount of time to be together I don't have to recommend it, sir. I, I will counsel them, and and if I determine that they they are in love with each other and I think they're going to stay together, then I'll marry them. Okay, these two people that you're going to marry, um, you see that in them. You see that commitment and that love and that trust. Well, really, trust is one of them too. You see I think that? so far from what I've from what I've known of them, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. I've never seen them bickering and fighting or. Anything like that. Jeanette, how did you end up in the program? Okay, um, I ended up in the program, well, um, my youngest son was in the program. He was 26 years old at the time, and he went to the program, and he uh, 
he did good. He got a job. He's working two jobs, actually. Um, he went to Transitional. After you go through our program, you go to Transitional. He went there, and he's living in Folsom, California now. He has a daughter and a son, and he he knew I was in my addiction, and he just, like, kept on asking me and asking me, Mom, are you ready? Are you ready? And I just didn't want to hear his mouth no more, and I just like, yes, I'm ready, son, you know. So he put me on the list, uh, clean and sober, and um, I was just not even ready. But I just kept telling him I was just to be qu- just to shut him up. But um, one day he came and knocked on my door, and he said, Mom, it's time to go. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, it's time for you to go. They got a place for you. I'm like, what? And, you know, he's just like, you don't need no clothes, don't need nothing. He took me one, one little duffel bag of clothes and told me, here's your new home. So I ended up in the program. I was scared and... Uh, he goes, well, the first thing he told me was, Mom, I got some good news and some bad news for you. The good news is you got placed in the program. The bad news is is they caught your son. And, you know, I was really scared because they already had two strikes, and I was scared that he was going to do it, be a three-striker. So um, that night I was at the program. I stood there, and there's I shared a house with 11 women. And um, it was just I was just didn't want to stay. I cried for about a week. I didn't want to stay there. I wanted to go help my son. And try to get him out of jail, which I knew I couldn't do, but that's how I ended up in the program. My son took me there, and it's a good thing. I've been there for like 15 months. Um, I got a daughter that lost her kids to CPS. Um, she seen me in the program. She got into a, um, a program. She got clean. She got her daughter back, and my my oldest son, he was he's a real bad alcoholic, and um, He's a real bad alcoholic, really, really bad into alcoholism. Um, his dad was an alcoholic, and um, I don't know if it, it's passed down heredity, heredically or not. Um, his grandfather was an alcoholic, and then his his dad was a real bad alcoholic, and my oldest son's really, really into drinking. And up to this day, he took himself out of the program, but he's working. Um, he does a good job. Uh, he slowed down on his drinking. I mean, he's not completely cured, but that's how I ended up in the program. Are you an addict or alcoholic? I'm an addict. Okay, um, I'm still asking the questions. I don't. I want to. Uh, I'm. Gonna, we're going to go away from the recovery thing for just a minute. Or, okay. Um, uh, what are your goals in life? What are my goals right now? Um, I really haven't set any goals, but now I'm thinking about. Well, because I got to raise my granddaughters. My goals are to get me a good job that I have. I have a career in. I'll be able to be stable and get a house and raise them. Do you uh, see marriage in your future? Uh, not right at this moment, no. I am married right now. I'm married. Um, eight one well, Yesterday was my anniversary, 19 years, but we haven't been together in like 11 years. Okay, we'll talk about something else. Um, who, what is the happiest moment you've ever been in your life? The happiest moment. Well, I've had a few of them, and they all had to deal with when I gave birth to my children. Okay. That was the happiest day. Right. Who is the, if you had to, one person that would be, you would call the greatest role model in your life, who would that person be? The greatest role model is um, my brother, Ernie. And what does Ernie do? He's a supervisor for Franchise Tax Board. Oh. Successful man. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Very. And um, what would be the proudest moment in your life? The proudest moment in my life? I really haven't came to one yet. <laughs> you are... I'm still struggling with my recovery and with my life right now, so... I really haven't came across it yet. I I think you should be proud of yourself for what you're doing right now. I know well, you're doing a very excellent job. But um, I'm sure you have prouder moments ahead of you. Okay. Um, what's your favorite animal? <laughs> Sorry, okay. Little, uh, My favorite animal, okay, is... Uh, really... My favorite animal I had was a pit bull. She was half pit and half um, something, but she was a mix. And she was, I mean, that dog 
she was so smart, and then it got killed by a car, but it was the smartest dog I ever had. Was there a time when you didn't like me? Like who, you? Yeah. No, I never. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, there was. When we used to do the car washes and you used to be out there with your hair waving in the in the air and all the cars used to honk at you and give you tips and everything. Yeah. I was jealous of you. I did not like you. Really? Yeah. What makes us such good friends now? What makes us such good friends? Because yeah. we're able to talk and... Um, yeah. I see a lot of growth in you since you, I mean, I didn't know you that good when you first came into the program, and now that you've been here for a minute, um, I see a lot of growth in you. And you're a very kind and caring person and giving. I'm just glad I'm not arrogant. Okay. Do you yeah, think we'll ever lose touch with each other? No. Because they say NA's everywhere. Is there anything that you've always wanted to tell me but haven't? <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, there's not. I think we were open and honest with each other. Yes, we are. I'm just tongue tied. I sometimes go from the, my hips sore. When uh, in life have you felt the most alone? When in life have I ever felt the most love? It's just, it's been about like maybe two months ago when my son did, just got out of prison. I mean, I had all my kids together, all mm -hmm. four of them together. And I mean, it was like the first time me and my kids ever took a family picture together. And I mean, that was the first time I felt a lot of love. Okay. When was, okay, how would you like to be remembered? How would I like to be remembered? Yes. I would like to be remembered as a, uh, caring, giving, um, honest um, person uh, because I think I give a lot of um, support to people right now and I mean that's how I was helping them out in their lives that's how I feel that I hope that I'm You will definitely be remembered. remembered for that You will be remembered for that Thank you I'll never forget it. When did you first find out that you'd be a parent? When I was 18. How did you feel? How did I feel? Scared. Because I didn't know if I should tell my mom and dad, and I didn't know if they were going to kick me out. I was scared. Can you describe the moment when you saw your first saw your, oh, Can you describe the moment when you saw your child for the first time? Probably not, because that's been over 32 years ago. But I know I was just filled with joy, relief and scared at the same time because I knew I had a baby then I had to raise and I had to be able to support and it's a scary feeling. Do you remember when your last child left home for good? Yeah. It wasn't a happy sight because okay. the police came and picked him up and took him to jail. Okay. <laughs> Do you have any favorite stories about your kids? Oh yeah, I have a lot of favorite stories. Okay, my one story is uh, about my son uh, Ruben. Okay, my family didn't like his father, so they didn't like the name Reuben. But my oldest son, Ray, went home and told everybody he had a brother named Jimmy. So then, uh, after that, we always said his name was Jimmy. So, But when he went to his dad's side, they called him Reuben. So I'm teaching him how to spell his name. And I'm over here teaching him, and I'm saying R, and he goes R, and I go you. He go me, I go you, and he goes me. I go you, me, he goes, me did, mama. You know, it's like, it was so cute. It's something... To know, you know, just see your son trying to learn how to spell, and he didn't know how to say you, but he say me instead. Oh, and it was precious. Yeah. I mean, that's fair. <clears throat> did you enjoy school? Yes, I did. What would you do for fun? What would I do for fun? Well, really, um, I had a real rough childhood. Uh, my father was real strict. We had to be in in bed at four o'clock after dinner, so we really didn't have fun. You know, we just go home from school, did our chores, and went to bed. He was really strict. He was an alcoholic. He was real abusive to my mother, and we didn't really have any fun. The only fun we had was when they got divorced, and then we got a stepfather and was able to go places with them and go to the snow and go different, you know, traveling and do a lot of different things. Can you tell me about your first kiss? No. <laughs> okay, we'll go on to her. Um. <clears throat> 
What did you think you were going to be when you grew up? What did I think? Yes. Well, I knew I was going to be a mother. I didn't. Um, I always wanted to be a teacher. Do you have any favorite stories from your work life or your job that you have now? Favorite stories? Yes. Uh, let's see, favorite stories. My my best ones are when I'm having helping the women, uh, or when the women have a problem, and just listening to their problems and everything. And um, ten ten minutes left. <laughs> okay. Um, can you tell me about your spiritual beliefs? Or what is your religion? Okay. Okay, okay my religion, I'm Catholic, but um, okay. I can answer that one because uh, we're supposed to believe in God. And, like, for a long time I didn't believe in him because um, I have a daughter that passed away when she was born it, due, due to um, crib death. And I didn't understand how he could give me something so precious and take her away. I didn't really understand that oh. at all. And for a long time I had a resentment against him. But being in this program is teaching me how to be able to understand that he's there to help me. He's not there to harm me. Right. That's right. Who are your favorite relatives? My favorite relatives. Uh, my Aunt Carmen. Uh, my Aunt Frances, for one. Um, when I was born, my mother couldn't bring me and my brother back from Texas. Uh, we were twins, and we were preemie, and we need special care. And my, they had to come back to Sacramento, California, for some reason. But my aunt kept us up to five years, and she couldn't support us no more. And she drove all the way from Texas with eleven kids in her car. And oh. I mean, I have a lot of love for her for bringing us here. Do you remember any of the stories that they used to tell you? They who used to tell me? Your your aunts, uncles, grandmother. Or mother. Not really. Jokes? Songs? <laughs> no. When you meet God, what do you want to say to him? I want to say thank you for my life. Thank you for for all the happiness he's brought me. I did not you know, I'm sorry for resenting you and for a long time and I'm just happy that I'm here. And he's given me the life and given my children the life that he has. Are you happy that you're here in this interview? <laughs> well, it was hard for me at first, but it's not as bad as I thought it would be. Okay. Since you turned the tables and got me talking instead of you. <laughs> I thought you said I was supposed to ask the questions first. Okay. 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 Um <clears throat> How has being a parent changed you? Um, it's made me more responsible, made me have um, more feelings, because like when I was growing up, I was like, when I was a teenager, I just didn't care. I was just really running amok, and now it settled me down and made me stop and think. And um, I have a lot of feelings and a lot of emotions. It's kind of like scary, but you know, it grows, it goes with growth. Do you have any kids of, of your own? <laughs> I don't. You don't have no children? No. Okay, that's why your have, niece and nephews are real important to you yes. today. Yes, I have many nieces and nephews. Okay, and you just had a, a great niece? Yes, my first great niece was born yesterday morning at 7 a.m. Her name is Leah McCulloch Thompson. And how much does she weigh? She weighs uh, seven pounds, three ounces. Okay, and she was born with something wrong with her? She was, she was born uh, with a, her collarbone is broken, and uh, she has some form of staph infection, and she has a heart murmur. But they said she's going to be okay. Um, uh, she just what are they doing delivery. to help the collarbone bro being broken? I haven't they? seen her yet. You I haven't know. seen her? I, I'm looking forward to going to the hospital to see her. Um, that must be a big thing, huh? We, uh, Special? Yeah, we had this thing to do, too, today. I'm not... I'm not going to be able to hold her. Yeah, it's very special for me. Um, but right now I'm working on my recovery, you know. So, I mean, it's more important than anything else in my life right now. But you're not letting your family in in your, in your life because of your recovery? They're uh, currently using their alcoholics. All I can do is set an example for them right now and help myself, save myself. That's how I feel about it. 
um, they're, they're a very important, <clears throat> they're very important around Christmas time. I like to make sure they have a nice Christmas and everything. Um, so do you spend any holidays with them? Yes, I spend Christmas and Thanksgiving, and I pop in two or three times a year. Um, yeah. Is that what you were saying before you came into the program? Yes, and I have a, I have a, one of my weaknesses is, and they know this, is um, Uncle Jimbo, we're struggling with this, we're struggling with that, and I try to save everybody all at once, and that's why I started drinking again, you know. And um, I can't fix the world until I fix Jim. No. And how long do you uh, plan on staying in the in the community in the clean sober community? Uh, as long as it takes. As long as it takes. Um, I don't. And how long have you been there this time? I've been there uh, 36 days, I think. This time, um, I'm doing things totally different this time. Um, I'm very very serious about my recovery right now. And. Um, I'm working real hard on holding still. That's what my sponsor told me to do, and that's what Manny told me to do. Is that one of your problems, getting up and trying to leave or staying still? What do you mean by that? Just staying put, staying in one place. I have, just... uh, I'm very intelligent, but I have racing thoughts and, um, and uh, just learning how to breathe again is huge for me. You know, I've got a severe anxiety disorder and I'm not medicating it. And uh, for 20 years I've been breathing, you know, and I'm not even aware of it, you know. And um, I get pretty crazy looking, I'm not aware of that either, you know. And uh, until I see somebody's reaction to it or something or they ask me if I'm okay, you know. So I'm working on my breathing and just staying where I'm at, you know. Um, You know, uh, it's it's the hardest thing I'm struggling with right now is like not not dating. You know, not not going and seeing my well, friends. Are, are, you know? um, are women your problem, or is it no, no problem? So you could get along with no females. <laughs> uh, I'm my problem. Okay. You know. Um, yeah, there was a time when I was uh, pretty promiscuous. Uh, and I'm just, I'm not that so you're guy, a I'm not that guy man. anymore. So you were a ladies' man at one time? No, I'm just Jimbo. At one time? I do like ladies. I, I like women. I don't know about a lady. I wouldn't call myself that. I don't consider myself that. I'm just looking for one person, one lover, one friend to spend the rest of my life with. That's all and I've you haven't found her yet? Nope, been through about 100 of them. And I've, I'm not, I haven't found her yet, apparently. You know? So are you still looking, I or think, you just put down well, the back I, I'm burner? I'm dating my friend Rose. I've I've been dating her for about 15 years. We've always got along pretty good. We just neither one of us never wanted to. Uh, and how come you haven't got married? Down. We probably will at some point. Um, learn, my sponsor's bringing me over some rings to look at tonight. Oh, okay. And, Is she going to the camp out this year with you? She's not an addict or alcoholic, so she's probably uh, she probably wouldn't be into that. She lives in Amador City in a little rustic house and just stays home mostly. You know. Well, I think that'd be a nice thing for her to see um, the community, how NA works. If even though she's not in it, we're she not participating. technically engaged. I think that um, I think I'm taking someone else to the camp out this year. Okay. Boy, I wish I could clean that one up. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Let's see. Okay, let's see. How would you... Okay. Where would you be in 10 or 20 years from now? Where do you think um, you would be? I believe I will be a, um, a professor. I will definitely have a degree in geology. Um, and I will be involved, my plan is to be involved in the petroleum industry. However, you know, things are changing in our world right now. Uh, with different fuels being formulated, different methods of extracting them from the earth. Um, I think it's very important that we start managing our minerals and oil and our resources as carefully as possible. Um, 
I, then I have the mining industry to fall back on, and then I plan on retiring in the scientific community. Well, there's just about two minutes left, so I was wondering for each of you if you have um, any lessons you've learned or advice for you for your nieces and nephews and for you for your grandkids. What, what are some important lessons you'd want them to know? Stay in school. If you're not in school, work. Stay off of drugs and alcohol. And be, good, be, be kind to your children and other people. Love is the most important thing. Yeah, family. 